Peter Gabriel and Shock the Monkey. And here in the studio is Peter Gabriel. Welcome, Peter. Hi. Now, as we were saying before that track, you uh, had a very busy day last Saturday. It was your reunion with Genesis at Milton Keynes. It must have been a pretty wet reunion, wasn't it, judging by the weather? Yeah, we had uh, filthy weather. It started about 6 a.m. and went on to about 2 a.m., solid rain. And the day before was perfect and the day after was perfect. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> you had to pick yeah. one day out of seven years, and yeah, that, that was so. the one. What sort of show was it for the benefit of people who didn't go? Was it a Genesis show or a Peter Gabriel show or what? Well, first, I just want to say that it's amazing for the audience, because uh, they waited out for about six hours in the rain, so I wanted to get that over. It was mainly old stuff. We thought, um, in return for us getting our fingers in their pockets, uh, we tried to give them what they thought, what we thought they might want out of the combination of the six of us. Although we had uh, a bonus with Steve Hackett coming back. Oh, he was the there as well. Yeah. So were you all dressed up and everything? Because Genesis, sort of early 70s, were well known for fantastically theatrical presentations. Well, there was a, a little uh, burst, you know. I tried to control it. I've seen the doctor, but <laughs> it still gets the better of me. <laughs> One, well, of you, that, yeah, one of the things that struck me about it was, I mean, you split from Genesis seven years ago. Was it very difficult to, um, or were you presumably not as familiar as you were with the old material? How did you, you go You could about say it? that. I was never good at remembering words, but this time I had to watch the lips of the front row very closely. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, this concert was, am I right, a benefit to uh, recoup some of the losses made on the, yeah. on the uh, accrued on the WOMAD festival, um, which you were one of the prime backers of. Uh, how, how did you go about organising that fantastic festival with the extraordinary breadth of artists there? Yeah. Can I say too there that um, here I am uh, missing up your interview. Uh, uh, there was one or two mentions suggesting that uh, Genesis had actually got some money out of that, and although they're often portrayed as very unhip and mm -hmm. uh, exploitative capitalist men of the rock world, um, it's entirely down to them now that the one mad movement can uh, move or struggle or crawl forward and they didn't get anything out of it. That's good. How did you go about getting people like the Burundi drummers and um, all sorts of uh, odd acts from all over the world? How do you get them to Shepton Mallet? I mean, presumably well, they're all in the yellow agency. pages. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you let your fingers do the walking. But, well, we, uh, I mean, we went into it really knowing uh, F.A. about the subject, really. You know, we just liked some certain uh, sounds and noises and thought that there was a lot that was interesting us and a lot of other rock musicians getting turned on by it. So uh, we approached embassies, uh, musicologists, anyone with a record collection, folk record shops, and um, there was a group of people in Bristol that were doing most of the scouting, and some of the connections were very hairy, and we uh, couldn't believe the amount of bureaucracy. But uh, when you actually got to meet the Minister for Youth, Culture and Sport from Burundi, who came with his drummers, you know, he's... He's a very uh, reasonable bloke, but actually getting through to them is a little uh, different. Yeah. The festival reputedly lost um, a sum of about £200,000. What did it actually cost to put on? Ooh. I'd say <laughs> a lot. Is that a, is yeah. that a rough <laughs> estimate or a, a <laughs> specific figure? Well, I don't... Uh, what do they call it? Guestimation in America, I think, yeah. So, so no, it, was, it was a lot of money. money. Yeah. And uh, I think we naively assumed that we had... Uh, an event with more appeal than it actually had. Um, I'm very hopeful that even if we can't continue, the, the, the idea is going to be uh, pushed through by some others because if nothing else, we showed that uh, a rock audience could give a standing ovation to a 50-year-old Chinese horn yeah. player. Mm -hmm. And um, that was great. Now, most people very often come on this program to plug albums and you've brought something very intriguing here. Would you like to tell us what this is? Is it? Yeah, well, it's my role as a travelling salesman this time. <laughs> is a, this is the Kids Pack, which, which is a group of the Womair people put out. And uh, I'm sure it will be available from 59 Shaftesbury Avenue. But essentially we want to see a lot of schools taking up these um, booklets and uh, an introduction to... Uh, cultures of all sorts of different places and uh, we'd still like to get the involvement of uh, lots more rock people in introducing kids to these things because if the people that appear on, on the rock programs are introducing and getting turned on to this stuff it's much more interesting than if the local education office yeah, is yeah. Uh, pushing it. Briefly, is there any chance of another WOMAD next year? Not next year certainly but I hope 
something similar uh, will definitely happen. Whether we can be involved with it remains to be seen, but uh, I think things look optimistic towards uh, clearing our way out of this mess at the well, moment. Thanks very much, yes. Peter Gabriel, and best of luck with your thanks own you. album, which we don't seem to have got around to mentioning, but yeah, I think Woman right. is, is yeah. a very good uh, cause. Best of luck with your many ventures.